Welcome back to our humble little Minecraft base. Today, we're working on a project that I am very excited about. I want to build a series of ships in the ocean between my cherry tree and the jack-o'-lantern crop farm. In each ship, there will be a small villager trading hall. Each boat will have a different villager profession inside, and the ships will be themed after that profession. So, for example, the three blacksmith professions will be grouped together inside a skeleton ship, with a dragon skull on the front and a rib cage wrapped around the middle. There will be four of these ships in total, covering the six villager professions that I want to trade with. Three of them will be normal boats, and one of them will be hanging from chains attached to a giant blimp. With the preamble out of the way, let's get started. I want to start with the boat that I'm most excited about, which happens to be the blacksmith skeleton ship. The bulk of the ship is going to be made using basalt. It's a little annoying to place since it's directional, but I think the horizontal lines actually make the ship look a bit better. In fact, three of the four ships that we'll be building today are made using directional blocks, so this may get a bit tedious. For the floors, I used andesite and stone. To stay in theme, I made sure to add a small pixel art skull in the center. When I pictured the ship in my mind, it was covered by bone ornaments. To bring that vision to life, I decided to add a rib cage that wraps around the middle of the ship. To make the ribs, I used a mix of regular and polished diorite and I used some walls on the top to make it look sharp. Honestly, this rib cage is what really sells the ship for me. Without it, it wouldn't look nearly as pretty. The next set of bones will be attached to the masts. I tried to make the little cross beams that hold up the sails in a generic bone shape, and I think that comes across pretty well. For the actual sails themselves, I used a mix of black wool and black concrete. And for the big one in the very center, I added the same small skull that I put on the deck. At the very top, I made these little red flags out of mangrove wood. I don't think this is the direction that they're technically supposed to be facing, but I just chose the direction that looked the best. For my finishing touches, I wanted to add a dragon skull to the bow of the ship, which should really tie this whole thing together. I had some trouble figuring this skull out, so I used the help of a tutorial that I've linked in the description. And just like that, we've got ourselves a skeleton ship. After finishing the ship, I went to move in the villagers. However, once I got to my makeshift villager breeder, I was met with, well, this. For context, a few episodes ago I built this giant pumpkin, which conceals a villager crop farm. The drops from the farm get transported underground and into a nearby lighthouse. Since my villager breeder is directly underneath the lighthouse, I had to run the transport pipe right through the middle. Originally, the pipe didn't have corners, so the villagers were, apparently, able to pick up crops through the glass. This allowed them as much food as they wanted and, in turn, the ability to keep breeding indefinitely. Since I occasionally AFK at the crop farm, they've had plenty of time to multiply. Now, I was under the impression that there can only be as many villagers as there are beds, but apparently these guys have surpassed their mortal limitations. On the bright side though, at least my crop farm will be more productive. You know, now that I'm not feeding a family of 50. With that mystery solved, I started moving the villagers over to the ship one by one. The skeleton ship was the only one that I was comfortable putting right next to my base's entrance. For one, it weirdly complements the cherry tree in a way that I can't quite articulate. But more importantly, it's the least lag-inducing of all the ships. Since the stronghold is already full of item frames and poorly optimized redstone, I don't have many frames to spare. But, the skeleton ship is only going to have three villagers inside it. One weaponsmith, one armorsmith, and one toolsmith. So the lag increase shouldn't even be noticeable. The other ships, however, will each be full of villagers, so I put them just outside my normal render distance. Okay, that's the skeleton ship officially finished. By the way, for the next couple of ships, I'm just going to skip over the villager transport part. I'm sure you get the idea by now. Now, 
Next, I want to build the ship that will be the home to my librarian villagers. This ship is going to be by far the most realistic, and that's mostly due to the color. I wanted to make it red to match the librarian's outfits, and Minecraft has tons of red blocks that work really well together. It's mostly made of mangrove logs, but I mixed in some horizontal stripes of planks and terracotta as well. I trimmed the boat with a red nether brick, which was a pain to craft, but well worth the trouble. If you aren't familiar, you need two nether wart for each block of red nether brick. For the sails, I alternated between bone blocks and red wool, which is honestly the main thing indicating that this is a librarian ship. By the way, if you're wondering where I've been getting all this wool from, I built a giant sheep pit in the middle of some random forest. Whenever I need wool, I just dye a few of the sheep that color and run through a few shears. Anyway, the exterior of the boat is finished, so I just have to move in the new villagers. I decided to put the four most important librarians above deck, which, in my opinion, are Efficiency 5, Unbreaking 3, Silk Touch, and of course, a Mending Villager, which I put up in the Crow's Nest. Below deck, I moved in 11 more villagers, representing the other important enchantments. Up next is the Magical Ship, the place where I will trade with Cleric Villagers. In order to match the color of the Cleric's outfits, I decided to build the ship out of crimson and bamboo blocks. While I think the color combination is really nice, it was also really difficult to work with. There aren't many blocks in Minecraft that look good with this palette, so I ended up settling for birch and dark oak. Regardless, I think the lack of texture is more than made up for by the shape of the build. I tried to make the front of the ship unusually steep, and I topped it with a little spiral. I also added a steering wheel onto this one, which does look a little bit silly, but I think it works. I struggled to come up with something thematic for the sails, so I just stuck with bone blocks and quartz pillar. To compensate for the simple colors, I made these sails much bigger than the rest of the ships, and I added a lot more ropes. In case you're wondering, I have a skeleton spawner and a moss farm in my stronghold base. That's how I've been able to use so many bone blocks in these builds. Alright, I think it turned out pretty good. The fourth and final ship is the one that will be hanging from a blimp. I started with the blimp since it's, by far, the most important part of this build. Since this will be the home of my mason villagers, it felt fitting to build the blimp out of rock-based blocks, namely stone, deep slate, and diorite. To make it look a bit more interesting, I added several spruce wood rings and ornaments. In my opinion, the best part of this blimp is the diorite fins. I used half slabs to make the slopes look smooth and make the points look sharp. The really long one up top is definitely the star of the show, and it makes this mostly grey build look more whimsical. Without it, I feel like this blimp might have looked out of place among the rest of my builds. Okay, that's the blimp down, and to be honest, I could have just left it as is, but since the rest of these trading halls are inside of boats, I wanted this one to follow suit. When compared to the other ones, this one is going to be very simple and tiny. I didn't want to draw too much attention away from the blimp, which is where the villagers are actually going to be held. I used a few types of planks, and I didn't give the ship sail since the blimp is doing all the work anyway. After connecting the two with chains, the exterior of this build was all finished. The interior of this ship happens to have a bit of a backstory. In my last survival world, before I had ever posted a video to YouTube, I completed a project called the Under Lava Lab. Beneath a moon-shaped lava pit, I built a futuristic lab full of weird redstone projects, one of which was a villager trading hall. 
The idea was to build a trading hall that could be hidden and summoned with the push of a button. And despite my lack of redstone knowledge, I actually pulled it off. By clicking the no block beneath the globe, villager heads would pop up from beneath the floor, one by one. Once I was done trading with them, I just clicked the button a second time and their heads went back down. It was such a weird part of my world, and villager trading was always super fun because of it. I want to bring that same trading hall style into this world by building it inside this blimp. I set up all the redstone, which is basically just a bunch of sticky pistons connected by a redstone line. I added a bunch of repeaters to the line, but that's not really necessary. They're just there to make it so that there's a delay between each villager's head popping up. After installing a basic floor and wall design, I was able to start moving in the villagers. Despite the blimp being way up in the air, the villager process actually went a lot smoother than the previous ones. Once I got the villagers inside the build, I let them wander into each hole on their own. Once a hole was occupied, I covered it up with a slab to make sure no one else fell in. After a while, I had 18 villagers and 18 holes. If you're looking to build something like this for yourself, here's the basics of how it works. You need a sticky piston with a chain on top of it. It can't be a slab, it has to either be a chain, end rod, or lightning rod. Then you put the desired workstation right next to each villager. Lastly, use a piston to push the slab into the villager's head. This is what allows them to seemingly pass through a solid block. From there, you just have to power the redstone line that's attached to the pistons. I decorated mine with small piles of stone-based blocks, and I was officially able to call this project finished. Here's how it looks in use. I pushed the note block near the entrance, which powers the redstone line. Slowly, each of the pistons will get activated, causing the villager heads to pop up through the floor. When I'm done trading, I just hit the note block again, depowering the redstone line and retracting the pistons. It is a very silly and unnecessarily complicated way to build a trading hall, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I hope you enjoyed the builds that we worked on today. I certainly had a lot of fun building them. When I started this world, I decided to build my first several projects all in one area. That has certainly been a challenge in some cases, particularly trying to make each build complement the rest of them. But it has also led to this feeling of the world being full, like there will always be something interesting to find no matter which direction you look. It's become the kind of world that I'd want to explore. For that reason, I think it's almost time I do a world tour and release a world download. I'd say I'm only one or two videos away from getting started on that project. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then keep an eye out. Okay, thanks again for watching, and I hope you stick around for the next project.